Hey everybody! Okay, so my name is Reagan and I am coming to you from my bathroom. We just launched our fall season. Super excited that the lookbook is out. Hopefully you received yours from your consultant. If not, ask her about it. Um, and we have not only launched a fabulous new lip gloss formula, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but we also have kicked off limited edition super fun products. And so I am going to do a look with these foil eyeshadows. And in fact, we just got a video of a look suggestion from for each of these eye color duos. So today I'm going to do the look that was suggested for the pink and purple foil eye colors. Okay. So you can see I've put together the compact exactly like she suggests in the video. And so I thought y'all would like to see how I am doing it because I think sometimes we get intimidated and we think that when we see a beautiful model do this look and we think, I don't know if I can even recreate that. So I do have some foundation on and that's about it. After this, I'm gonna do another quick video about um, contouring and highlighting and what a difference that can make in your overall look. And so um, I'll link that video at some point as well. So if you wanna get directly to it, you can find it. But it is super important to start with a clean face and I do my foundation primer and then my foundation. And now I'm gonna do our eye primer. The eye primer is amazing and really important because it makes the color go on fat, um, more vibrantly and then it also makes it last all day. It makes it like waterproof practically. And so I do my, found, my eye primer and my foundation primer every single day, even if I'm just doing something really quick and easy because I love the way it just holds on to that color. So if I do my makeup at you know six o'clock in the morning and then I'm still kind of going at eight or nine o'clock at night, it still looks nice and fresh. So the first thing that I like to do is she talks about using the mahogany. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of our black eyeshadow first just to give it even a little more depth and drama and so if you're wanting to go to make it a little more intense then all you need to do is take i am using our smudge brush just to keep it really where i want it and i do just a little bit of black underneath all the color that i'm going to be doing and I just do kind of a sideways V there, see? Now it can look really intense when you first do it, so don't be intimidated. It's kind of like doing a paint by numbers. And then once you've layered and blended, it's not gonna look nearly this dark or intense, okay? So no matter what your skin tone is, you can still just get a little bit of this black underneath and it's going to make the colors just that more that much more dramatic but it's totally up to you you can skip straight to what she suggested which is the mahogany so the mahogany is just this really pretty kind of a um, uh, burgundy meets purple kind of a shade all right so I, that goes straight over the top and like I said, you can just use that as your darkest shade. That's totally fine. It's plenty dark. And I'm taking that and I'm going over the sideways V and then I'm carrying it in. And what you can notice is that I'm keeping the color above my crease. Because I have smaller eyes um, and smaller lids, I keep the color above the crease up towards my socket bone so that the, I don't make this area look too small. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that on both sides. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want you to be able to see, I mean, you want it to be fairly, you, I mean, you want it to, you wanna try to make it as symmetrical as possible. And that just takes a little bit of practice because none of us are perfectly symmetrical anyway. My, my eyes are not the exact same, you know, on both sides. 
and the angle of the brush is a little bit different because I'm right-handed. So when I'm going this way, it looks like that, but then when I'm on this side, I, I have a little bit of a different angle. And so to get it symmetrical just takes a couple of checks, you know, just kind of checking on it to make sure. And again, you're gonna be blending these so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so the next recommendation is to actually take one of these little sponge tip applicators because that is gonna help press this foil eyeshadow. It's super shimmery. And as you press it onto the lid, and that also is gonna help with fallout, meaning if you have a lot, of, with all the dusting, if you don't wanna get your eyeshadow all over your face, this is a very light, fluffy, glittery formula. And so, using a sponge tip just helps to keep the color under control and put it exactly where you want it. And you just press it in that way. And then what I'm gonna do is use our all over brush and do a little bit of our, of the pink. Oh my goodness, what is this color called? It's just called Blossom. Yeah, this is my favorite light pink matte shade. And I go under the arch of the eyebrow. And the main reason that I like to do that is to help lift the eyebrow um, and make sure that the color doesn't go so far up that it just looks like I've got the dark purple all the way up to my eyebrow, okay? And you can kind of blend that there. And then you can use that all over brush to blend the colors so that you don't necessarily see where one starts and one stops. Okay. Oh, sorry, hopefully I wasn't blocking just now. All right, so you can look at the difference between the, color, the side that I've blended and the side that I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna blend the other side. And then sometimes, especially when you're working with darker colors, it's not a bad idea to, have, to brush it off um, to make sure that you are not getting um, Again, that you're not blending. And the eye primer really helps with this too. If you've ever struggled with doing all this great eyeshadow and then next thing you know, it looks like you just have one big color, eye primer is really gonna help with that where it keeps the depth and the, and the colors and the shape where you want it, but you're able to blend and soften it. Okay, so there's that look, and then if you want to go back over, now that you've blended, um, I frequently go back over, when I, especially when I'm really trying to do a more dramatic look. So I'm getting a little mahogany again, and I'm going back over. Sometimes when I blend it, it just makes it even softer than I want it to be. All right, and then go back over with the pink to get that bright sparkle really where I, how, how bright I want it, okay? And then there you go. All right, so that can still feel a little scary. A lot of times when I do these looks, I still feel like, oh my gosh, that seems like so much. But once you've done your hair and your eyeliner and your mascara and your lips and all of the things, then it really just ties it together. So if this feels really dark, I encourage you to go ahead and do these last steps, do the full face and hair, then step back at least an arm's distance away because that's about how far you are from people when you're talking to them. And so um, then you can always tone it down some more. You can always blend it. You can even take a color like that blossom and go over the whole eye with it to just soften it if you feel like you're having a hard time blending it, okay? so. I'm gonna do our amazing waterproof liquid eyeliner. I love this eyeliner. 
and I love that it just lasts all day and it makes it so easy. If you've ever been intimidated by liquid eyeliner, this is like the, the eyeliner for beginners. It is so great and so easy. And after just one or two times, you're gonna feel like a pro. Okay, so look how easy that is. Okay. And then sometimes if I, especially when I'm dealing with glittery, sometimes I just have to close it and kind of shake it up a little bit. If it's, if I'm getting a lot of glitter on it, um, it can make it not go on quite as dark. And so I just have to give it a second, shake it up a little bit, get more ink down into the brush. And this is like a felt tip pen. So it's firm and easy and precise. So I'm gonna show you how, see how you, I mean, you can do exactly the shape that you want. You can make it as thick or as fine point as you want to. Okay, so now let me check, see if I'm fairly symmetrical. And right now, my I, I love all of our mascaras. They are great for different things, but right now my ultimate favorite one that I'm using every single day is the Lash Love Fanorama. Oh, before I do that, hold on. I almost forgot. So then what, we're, what this look calls for is, I hope you can see my little ring light there, um, putting the purple as your eyeliner. So you can go underneath here And you don't have to go all the way in. You can just do a little bit. I'll show you the difference. Look, look at the difference that it makes between just doing a light on the edge of the corner and going more dramatic and smoky. Okay, so you see the difference between the two eyes just from that. So you can go either way. You can go more dramatic or you can keep it a little bit more natural little more daytime look if you want to. And if you wanna smoke it out, then you just thicken that whole area there. And then you can go over the black liquid eyeliner with the purple sparkle. So it really is just as sparkly as you wanna go. And then I'm gonna take the sponge tip applicator with the purple and I'm just gonna kind of blend a little bit of purple out on that edge. Okay, so yes, this is very dramatic, but we're going into the fall. So keep in mind that the fall is a great time to just play with color, play with sparkle, especially right now, we are wearing masks, you know, pretty much everywhere we go. And so having your eyes really pop and stand out and look happy and colorful and um, that can just really make a big difference in your day and in the impression that you make on others. And then, so with the Fanorama, I use the very, see, you can see there how it's got the um, brushes on the edge, on the tip. So I use that for The bottom lashes and I always do the bottom lashes first and that's just a simple little trick if you ever struggle with getting doing your mascara and getting it all over the place a lot of times what we do is we do the top lashes and then when we go down to do the bottom ones then um, we get that dot, 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 we end up getting mascara up here. So if you just do the bottom lashes on both eyes first, that helps to avoid, I keep touching my bangs here. All right, so then with the Fanorama, you can see here, I'm gonna hold it there. So see how it's curved like an hourglass? And then when I turn it, see how it's flat? So you want the hourglass first 
And that's the side that you're gonna zhuzh with. If you are familiar with makeup videos and things like that, you know what they're talking about with zhuzh. And you just go to the very base, as close to the eye as you can. And you're gonna get as, as thick of an application as you like. And this mascara does layer nicely. So you can do this as many times, this process as many times as you want. All right, then I turn it and I go to the flat side. And the flat side is going to give it a different layering and fanning out. Okay. So with just one layer, all right, so that's the mascara with and without the mascara. All right. I love, love, love this mascara. And when I do softer looks, you really see the lashes. I don't know if the video is showing how bold the lashes are, but maybe if I turn, <laughs> you can see. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the other side with the hourglass first. Zhuzhing at the base and bring it out. And you can see with my outfit, I'm feeling the pink vibe for this fall. Super excited about pink being such a fun color. I already had just gotten the sweater and then now, and then it's pink all over our lookbook. So I'm really loving that because I like to still wear soft and pretty and bright colors. I'm not a winter per like my personality is not much of a winter person, but also my coloring. I do better with corals and yellows and pinks and blues than I do with like the rust colors and mustard colors. Um, so I love having fun with fall looks while still having what some might consider more spring and summer colors. Okay, so there is the mascara. And then like I said, you can go back and you can shape and layer as much as you want. We also have a lash primer that you can put on underneath any of our mascaras that is great. Okay, so there is that look. And again, you can do the same shape and color and then you just kind of clean this up. In the next video, I'll show more about that in my little contouring and kind of final touches video. Um, then I love this cheek color she recommends. You can see it if you go back in the back of our books, that's where it makes it really easy to see like all of the colors in one place. And so this is the rosy nude. And I just, Put it from the apple of my cheeks up towards just right where the top of my ear. You do not want to go too close to your nose or to your eye because that will kind of crowd your face. And the model in the video that I'm copying has dark bronze skin and she used this color too. So it's really fun to see different colors as well as just tweaking your colors, um, but on different skin tones. It's just, it's, I love playing with the colors and seeing how they look on you know all different skin tones and hair colors. And then I'm doing the uh, light nude lip liner. And you can go, if you're doing a nude that actually matches your lip color, you can go a little bit outside the line. And that actually is, and then I just kind of blend it. And that helps because I don't have very full lips. 
So I just do a just on that outer edge and kind of blend it. And then she recommended the um, blush velvet. I don't know if I've ever actually worn this color, but I'm kind of excited to try it. So this is blush velvet. Again, the video shows it on bronze skin and more ivory skin and I am beige. So you get to see it on all the different skin. I am wearing beige 220 foundation, if that gives you any idea. Now she recommended the mauve, the new mauve lip gloss, which I love. I think it's called Enchanted Mauve. Really pretty, but I've sold all of mine. <laughs> it's a very popular color. Um, let's see here, hold on. I love all these shades, so I could do a whole video just on our lip glosses. All right, so she did the Enchant, I'm sorry, Unique Mauve, Unique Mauve. I am going to do the nude blush, which is one shade down in a cream. We have cream, pearl, and shimmer lip glosses. So this is the nude blush. I really like this because sometimes nudes, I feel like, are so brown, it just, it makes it look like you don't have a mouth at all, right? And so I love this nude because it's a pink nude and it goes on so easily and it's not sticky at all. So. There is the look for this fall. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will attach um, a link to the video that I was copying as well as a link to my finishing touches, highlighting and contouring video. Make it a beautiful day.